Good morning. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm here to rekindle my faith. I hope you're here for that. I'm Pastor Scott Grolke. Serving with me is Pastor Melly Momo. She's here to rekindle her faith. We have a choir up here ready to rekindle their faith. We pray you're going to want to do that today. We have a new connection card. Now, some of you thought last week, I'll just put my name on here and turn it in. Sorry. This one, we have to have complete information before we publish the directory. So if you did not fill one out yet, please do so today. Or we'll be coming after you next time. Our theme today is rekindling our faith. Lynn Thompson is going to get the fire started. Good morning. God is good all the time. Please stand for our call to worship. Stand if you are able. We come on World Communion Day to get together in unity. We are part of a universal family of faith in Christ. We seek a rekindling of our spirits. We seek strength to the common task. 
We seek in prayer to learn what it is to serve others. Thank you, merciful God. Thank in Christ you have sought to unite all things in heaven and in on earth. Reconcile us to our another and to your throne and the bread. Complete your new creation within us and nurture us through the gifts of your presence in Christ. Amen. Sunday, we're going to be doing hymn number 625. The praise kids are going to lead us through the first stanza of each verse, and we invite the congregation and the choir to sing the second stanza of each verse. So you'll be singing lines two and four if you'd like to join us.
morning. You guys did a great job. Love it. Well, this is going to be review for some of you because some of you were here this morning too. But for those of you who weren't here, I had a question. Have you ever played follow the leader? Yeah. And have you ever gotten to be the leader? Yeah. Do you feel important when you're the leader? What is your job when you're the leader? What do you need to do? Yes. You have to lead them somewhere. Now, what if the leader gets really silly and leads you the wrong way? Like, I don't know who came out of here, but what if, what if the leader would have ran up there and ran around and then came and sat down? Would that have been a good leader? It might have been a little fun, but Pastor Scott might. I would have laughed. But anyway, we don't do that. Cause see, so maybe I wouldn't make a very good leader if we played that game, huh? But the point is, we want a good leader, right? We want to do the right thing. We want to, if we're the leader, we want to lead people the right way. So Jesus had disciples he asked to follow him and led them. And what Jesus wants us to do, he wants us to find people who can lead us not only inside these church walls, but outside the church walls too. And he wants us to be good leaders, but he wants us to find people who can lead us to um, help us live the life that he wants us to live. So to make good choices, um, to have faith in him, to nurture our faith, and Pastor Scott's gonna talk about that in a little bit. So that's what we wanna do when we're a leader. We want to be a good leader and show people the right way to live, and we want to find people in our lives who are good leaders. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the people who lead us to you. Help us to be leaders for other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Key. Thank you, children. Now is the time for us to come to the Lord in prayer. We have prayer requests written in our in the boat and here. And also remember those who have been affected by the hurricane Ian. Let us pray. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, Father of glory, we thank you. We thank you, God, for allowing us to come together in this place to worship you. We also thank you for those who are worshiping with us online, the radio. We give you praise for the gift of life. We give you praise for who you are, our creator, all-knowing God. Thank you. Thank you for loving us, Lord. We ask that you accept this act of worship. It is our. That you bless us abundantly, Lord. That you remove from our path whatever is evil plans in the name of Jesus. That you heal us, Lord. Lord, we remember those who are not feeling well at this hour. We ask that, Lord, you be with them. Where they lay, sit, walk, be with them. Lord, I ask for that grace of healing to move in their bodies in the name of Jesus so that they are able to worship you and praise your name. Lord, I pray for those who have upcoming surgery, upcoming doctors visit. Lord, I pray that you be with them through it all. Strengthen, hold their hands, Lord. Lord, we also remember those who have lost loved ones. We ask for your comfort, God, comfort. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we remember those who have been affected by Ian, the regenic Ian. Lord, I ask for your grace. I ask that you see them where they are. Jehovah Jireh, I ask that, Lord, that you provide their needs. Jehovah Nisi, I ask that you see them where they are, Sabaote. 
Thank you, Father, for who you are. I give you praise for you are faithful. Lord, I pray for our church and ask that you help us be at your work with you. That if you have gone astray, forgive, Lord, and put us where you want us to be and bless us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I remember many in this country going through tough time. Even the people in Mississippi I had continue suffering from water damages. Lord, I pray that you watch over them and those in the West Coast as well. Lord, we pray. Lord, we also remember our farmers as they are in the field. Bless them, protect them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for your words that you have made available for us to help us, to encourage us, to remind us who you are, to remind us that no matter what, Lord, you will never forsake us. You are there always, even when it feels that you are not there, but you are there. Thank you for the assurance. So bless us, Lord abundantly so and here our voices as together we lift saying the way your son Jesus Christ continue teaching us our father who art in heaven our Lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, in the power, in the glory forever. Amen. So now we pray for our offering. Lord, I thank you for the act of giving. Lord, I ask that you bless what we are about to give and what we have given, that you multiply it for your work, that you bless the source of providence, Lord. Bless us so that tomorrow we'll be able to support your ministry. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory. Amen.
Old Testament reading is coming from us from Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, scoffers. But, their, but their delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruits in its season and their leaves, their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. <laughs> may be seated and then I'll ask you to stand for the reading of the New Testament it's just a test see if you're really listening we read from 2nd Timothy chapter 1 what an honor it is to be able to read the scriptures in a country where we can own a Bible in a church where you have a Bible right in front of you, anytime. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. 
I'm grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I'm reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now I'm sure lives in you for this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you to the laying on of my hands, for God did not give you a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or, the, or me, his prisoner, but join me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a, lo- a holy calling not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher And for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. For I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I'm sure that he's able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you've heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. As the ancient word was breathed upon by the Spirit of the living God, so may the living Christ, the living word, step from its pages. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. God, we ask that you would kindle our minds, our hearts, our understanding, our our living of these days as the Spirit interprets for us these words. Amen. Life is a way of testing your faith. Just ask those in the path of Hurricane Ian. Life is a way of testing your faith, stretching it, bending it, perhaps breaking it, which could help you to rebuild it. The elder Paul has been saying this to his young colleague, guard the treasure of your faith. Paul's not writing out of ignorance. He knows the challenges, the success, the failures, the persecution, the potential for emotional and physical overload. Despite the pressure he's committed for the long haul, he's placed placed his faith in, in the same Jesus who had first encountered him. Paul has been criticized for his comments about women in some places, in some moments. Not here in the letter of Timothy. Here he steps from patriarchal thinking and identifies women women who've made a difference. Lois, Timothy's mother, and Eunice's grandmother, they had introduced Timothy to Jesus and nurtured him. Who in your life introduced you to faith. Who introduced you to faith? It was certainly my father, Herbert Grolke, a United Methodist pastor for more than 50 years, and another pastor, Phil Chilcote, who, who I met in my young adult years, but there are, there are at least three women, significant women, my mother, Barbara Grolke, who 
was present to nurture me as a child, now at the age of 91, remains a faithful supporter. There's Reverend Mildred Sloan, who was the associate pastor at Crete United Methodist Church when I was in my young adult years guiding me. Then there's Kathy, my wife, who has journeyed with me through these 12 churches so far, and two churches in Gravesend, England, and the district superintendency years. Kathy was there for the three weeks at Carl Hospital as 21 physicians pursued the diagnosis of disseminated histoplasmosis. Kathy was watching, wishing, waiting, and worshiping in prayer. Women are the leaders behind the men who think they're in charge. I know. Guys, I'm going to say it again. Make sure you wear your steel toes when you come into church. Women are the leaders behind the men who think they're in charge. Reminds me of a couple of images. This one from a female minion. Men say that women should come with instructions. What's the point of that? Have you ever seen a man read instructions? <laughs> and this image where the church secretary answers the phone saying, do you want to talk to the man in charge or to the woman who knows what's going on? Really. And this New Testament reading, Paul confirms what I already know. Women are the keepers of the flame in the church of Jesus Christ. They always have been. A woman was chosen to bear the Christ child. Women were the primary companions of Jesus at the cross among, and among the last to pick up the emotional pieces at his death. Women, the first to, dis to discover the empty tomb. Women, the first evangelist to tell the good news of resurrection. Women heavily supported the church's ministry in the book of Acts. Early church historians consider Mary Magdalene an apostle to the apostles. Luke depended on women as he wrote his gospel and the book of Acts. The second century Bishop Clement wrote that women accompanied the apostles as colleagues. In Romans, Paul mentions Junia and Phoebe as noted among the apostles. The ancient catacombs of the second through fifth centuries include murals of women as priests and bishops. Second through fifth century. Without women, the church would not have survived 2,000 plus. Who passed the faith to you? A mother, a grandmother, a father, a grandfather, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, someone else? It's time to recall them, to recover their memory these guardians, these transmitters, these conveyors, these cultivators, these nurturers, these shepherds of our faith. The second letter of Timothy is presented as Paul's farewell. He invites us to remember our ancestors of faith. And the second thing he asks is that we rekindle the gift of God's grace. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of self-discipline. William Barclay observes here the motivation for faith is not fear, but the power of the spirit in your life. Barclay writes, for Paul, Christianity was not the threat of damnation. It was the good news of salvation. 
moving people to be submissive to the love of God. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love, of self-discipline. Rekindle the gift of God's spirit on your life, the community of love around you, and the self-discipline within you. United Methodists, we could use a rekindling of the spirit. Right? Garrison Keeler, the storyteller, wrote a lot about Lutherans, but he had a Methodist background. He said, Methodists are easy to make fun of for their blandness, their excessive calm, and their secret fondness of macaroni and cheese. They are the kind of people you call when you're in deep distress. If you're dying, they will comfort you. If you're lonely, they will talk to you. If you're hungry, they will give you tuna salad. If you're and you know you're a Methodist. He said, when donuts are a line item on the church budget, I said, Pastor Melly, we, we want to check that. Coffee and donuts. Rekindling the spirit happens for me. One of the places it happens for me at his annual conference as long as I can remember, our opening has always been Charles Wesley's hymn, And Are We Yet Alive and See Each Other's Face. And around, and around the room in that moment, there are generally some tears for the absence of those who's, who've passed on and the joy of those who can still sing. Beyond simply existing in faith, Paul encourages us, encourages us to thrive by rekindling the power of God's Spirit, the community of love and self-discipline within us. Paul invites us to remember our ancestors to rekindle the gift of God's grace and not to be ashamed, but resolved to share the gospel with others. All of Elaine Hinnant, a United Church of Christ pastor, has written this about sharing the gospel. She wrote, the good news is always one generation from extinction. If one generation would become ashamed of the gospel and does not risk testimony, how will the next generation know? Paul needs Timothy to guard the deposit of faith, to tell the story. God has come to us in Christ. Do not be ashamed of this saving grace. Carry to others what you believe. I've come to believe in very few absolutes. Life is brief. God is love. The universe is vast. The earth is fragile. We are unique. And we are similar. Hmm. And Jesus Christ is the clearest expression of the creator. His grace keeps us if we will keep nurturing ourselves in faith. We remember our ancestors of faith. We rekindle the gift of God's grace and we resolve to share the gospel in, in word and daily action and in this sacrament of love as Pastor Melly leads us now. Our responses could be found in the hymn on page three, eh, 13 and 14. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and every way to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made, a, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest, holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to, to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. I remind you that you do not need to be a member of this church to share in the sacrament to share in this meal with us. If you're desirous to follow Christ, you're welcome to the table. Our ushers will be leading you forward. We'll be, okay. Our ushers will be leading you forward.
together met, together bound, will go our different ways and as his people in the world, we'll live and spread his praise. We'll live and spread his praise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.